About 11 years ago, when Maruti was planning to revamp its image and change its customers' mindset from kitna mileage deti hai to a more evolved one based on passion and aspirations, it came up with the Swift. It wasn't just stylish and unconventional in terms of its looks, but also a pioneer when it comes to the way it was marketed. Today we have for you exciting stories and snippets from members of the core team who launched this iconic car back in 2005 along with inputs from Maruti's Vinay Panth. Take a look. Maruti has been driving the auto revolution in India, right? So we always have been about masses, right? It's, it's, it's not about very small volumes which, which drive us. So we already had the Maruti 800, we had the Alto and the Zen which were there. But for a person to move from these cars to the next one, we did not have a very strong contender there. Right? And by that time, by 2001-2, we realized that people were now willing to move to the next one. It was about the maturing Indian buyer. So we had already led this way. We had got the people behind the wheels. Right? Having a, a large set of people behind the wheels, we wanted them to upgrade to the next level. Right? So therefore, a different iconic kind of a styling is something that we were sure would work. Right? That along with this new desire of people to actually try out different things, came up with different, different options which were there. We had a very, very fresh kind of a product, very, very different from what we had in the in the market, which redefined, as I was saying, the, the design concept because it was very radical design. Uh, we had not seen that kind of a design in India and certainly not from Maruti. I have two very interesting people with me who've played a very key role in launching Swift in India. I have here with me Avik Chattopadhyay and Murli Nair. Welcome to Brandstand. Swift was one of the most youthful and coolest cars of, of its time. What were the kind of pointers that you had in mind while planning the whole strategy for promoting and marketing the brand? What was most important was to understand the very essence of the vehicle and as you said, it was something which was going to redefine uh, the roads, it was something which was going to cater to a new kind of, in, uh, of, of an Indian. And uh, therefore, we had to break a lot of stereotypes. Uh, it was all about the owner and not about the product. Okay, so the product was more of a manifestation of what the owner's mind is like. And, and that was the young Indian. So, and uh, you know, if you were to see Maruti's uh, journey over the years, it's almost been uh, you know, a transformation every decade. So 83 was the Maruti 800, okay, that had a certain role to play. That again became an icon by itself. 93 was the Zen, okay, it again broke a lot of stereotypes then, okay, it played a certain role. And then 2005 was the Swift, okay, so it was 12 years, but let's say 10 years, because 2003 is when it all started off, or working on it and deciding what kind of a role does this vehicle really play. So, and this, possibly this was the first time in the case of Maruti, when Maruti itself as an organization was going through a huge amount of churn and a brand remake. Okay, Maruti had the IPO in 2003. So for the first time, this government organization opened itself, okay, to public. Uh, and it was moving out of the, let's say the, the Sarkari image. And what best than actually a physical vehicle to embody the new Maruti, which was young, spirited, vibrant, okay, connecting to the generation of tomorrow and um, therefore absolutely an aspirational brand. And what about you? What was the brief given to you by your mentor come boss? I don't know if there was a written brief. Or there was, you know, if there was, probably there was no time to read that because it is almost like hitting the uh, road running. Um, but what I think was that uh, half the job was done by the product in terms of styling, in terms of features, that was way apart um, even compared to other competition uh, models. Let's say one quarter of the rest of the half was done by the customer themselves. Any initiative that we did uh, on the ground, online, there was so much of enthusiasm. So when we had the, uh, the tagline, so you are the fuel, we never actually expected this kind of a response from the customer side. So this was almost like a self-sustaining momentum. And all we had to do in terms of marketing was probably one quarter. So in that sense, of course, we did play a part, but there were many other things which came together. And of course, in the beginning, I do remember we had so many overbookings, so there's so much of a waiting period that some of our very friendly dealers spread the word that Swift does not give you great fuel efficiency so that people would buy Wagon and Altos of the world. 
And then at almost like a year after the launch, we had to really push up marketing again. So that's where I think marketing probably helped to push this uh, sales figures after the initial hype was over. Yeah. And still, I think at the end of the first year, we had the highest sales of any newly launched car in the history of India. You know, you know, we tried a lot of new things, okay? And Murli and Joy, I'm um, Joy is not here, but uh, but they, I guess they actually found this this opportunity to give vent to all the interesting kind of stuff that they wanted to do. So Murli would do a deal with Cafe Coffee Day, okay? And even before the vehicle is launched, launch a coffee in the name of the vehicle, okay? And distribute T-shirts with the outline of the vehicle to customers. Okay, prospective customers. Okay, Joydeep would have this idea of actually saying, why do we not need to put up normal hoardings? Why can't we actually do one is to one fiberglass replicas of the Swift and actually stick them up, okay, as billboards? Everybody got together for this period of 36 months saying, we have to make this happen because this is the new Maruti. So it was more than just a product launch, you see, there was this greater mission of launching a new Maruti. The way, the way the new Maruti should express itself, should, should talk about itself, and this vehicle was the best vehicle, as Murli said, you know, to embody that spirit. And to add to this enthusiasm of trying out new things, I must say um, 3M, <laughs> I try hard not to laugh about it, but uh, one of the most innovative companies. So they had this um, idea, or we had an idea which we developed with them, that we take a, <laughs> sorry, because I, think I cannot say this without laughing. Because you know, uh, they wanted to use these trucks which carry the, the cars across the country without branding. So they came up with, I don't know, the length of the truck with a special sticker I mean, uh, which will show us fifth. So it's like, this is something which has never been done in India before. So it's a, it's a sticker where if you press, a small glass uh, cubicle breaks and this has a guarantee of two years. So it'll stick on the trucks. So you have our trucks which also carry Hyundai cars. So imagine a truck going into the Hyundai factory, coming back with a bunch of Hyundai, but which has this fifth sticker. Wow, right. how did you pull that off? That was advertising for us. You see, you, you, we realized that we need not do the conventional stuff to promote the vehicle. So, I guess for the first time, at least in the automobile industry, there was something called viral marketing. So we would ourselves, we can say that now, okay? It's, it's 11 years. We would ourselves create other accounts online and post pictures of the Swift on test, saying caught a photograph of a Swift on test. And that would become viral. You just mentioned that there were a lot of things being done for the first time in, in the case of uh, marketing Swift. And it was also the first time that Maruti had tied up with a movie to market a brand. So tell us about that association. You say the start and I end with part. the, yeah, you say the good part and let me say the, not so. Okay, again, this is again another example of not going the conventional way. Okay, so we said this car is too bloody good. I, we don't need any television advertising. Okay. But then how yet to reach across to millions of people in a very short period of time in an interesting cost-effective manner. And that's when we came up with this idea of can we do some kind of a product placement. Okay, and of course, I mean, we used to look at the kind of stuff that BMW does with Bond and so on and so forth. So, then we had this opportunity, we, we got to hear that this movie is being made and it was, an, it was an interesting story of, you know, a young couple conning people around. We said, okay, this, this, this may be the personality of the vehicle, okay, it might work. Then we got talking to them, but the idea was that, that we will coincide the date of launch of the Swift with the date of release of the movie. Okay, there was a lag of a day. Okay, but it was, it was right then and after that there was a lot of on-ground activity in the form of test drives. But Murli will give you the, the, the gory part of the movie. Uh, yeah, the product placement uh, got kind of uh, into trouble because of a zero. I'll explain why. Because the movie, the song was shot in Ladakh. Now, we couldn't get the car up there because, you know, Ladakh, the roads open up only between um, July and September. And we even looked at heli lifting it way probably way too expensive and too risky not possible so a few months before that I had gone on a motorbike ride to a place called Sambal that's near Jaipur so which looked very dry almost like Ladakh so yeah, why not do it there so in the communication I said it's about 450 kilometers from Delhi 
The zero got missed in the communication. So Rani and Abhishek Bachchan land in Delhi airport. I am there at the airport to receive them. And we put the Swift in a truck because it was not yet launched to go to, I told the driver, go to the summer wreck and we'll coordinate with you. And they come out and they're like, okay, we should be there in an hour, right? And that's when I realized that they had communicated 45 instead of 450 kilometers. So of course Abhishek was not too happy, he walked back, Rani was laughing and I was like, okay, what to do? They said, okay, send it to our studio in Mumbai and then we'll figure out the rest. So then I called the driver who was already probably near Jaipur and said, keep driving, don't stop, go to, but go to, Mumbai. Go to Mumbai. I said, no, I have permit only for Rajasthan. Um, so then Joy and I, we actually got into a truck which has an all India permit. We, <laughs> we went to Jaipur in a truck. I've never been um, in a truck at least not so far. Shift the car from one truck to another in the middle of the night then send uh, it to them. Talking about crazy stories, we've, we've, we've gone through our own periods of huge panic, okay? So we had this bright idea that that uh, uh, we would encourage people to take test drives at night. So we tied up with Dabar and we got these tetra packs of, of juice, okay? And, and we made nice pouches. So after you take a test drive, you get a thank you pouch, okay, which has a uh, which has a tetra pack of juice and and uh, you know the wet tissue and stuff like that and they've gone out by the thousands right and we have a few packs lying in office so the next day joy picks one up to drink and says oh shit so we said what happened so this is past the expiry date oh, damn. i mean we, i mean we are sorry we're leaking all this out after 11 years but I think if you've made it to 11 years, you probably <laughs> have survived uh, our juice. Tell me something, before the launch of Swift in 2005, Maruti had these flagship brands in the early 2000s like the Zen, Alto and Wagonar, which were really utilitarian, simple looking cars, but Swift was completely different. So how did this particular model impact the brand image of Maruti? As we said, you see, the Swift was also uh, very, very important for Suzuki as a company, okay? Because Suzuki before that also had the Alto and the Wagon R and vehicles like that. And Suzuki was this more this functional, um, you know, economy, reliability, uh, compact, subcompact cars. So for them also, the Swift was a very important project because it broke a lot of stereotypes about, about Suzuki as a car brand. It helped Maruti also a lot because it broke the way it broke the conventional stereotype of how people looked at Maruti as a company. Plus it was very stylized, unlike the boxy looking, very utilitarian, simple looking Wagoner, if I so, can so, so that them. So that was the new Suzuki and therefore that was also the new Maruti. Okay, which was young, energetic, spirited, okay, warm, friendly, at the same time, uh, not conventional, a rebel. But I wanted to add to the point that you said before, how we transformed internally. We also recruited 500 sales executives who would sell only the Swift. I mean, these 500 people probably led the change within the dealership to be go beyond just these numbers. We all know about the huge success of Swift, which gave way to an extension of the brand by the name of Swift Desire. But the car has increasingly been seen as, as a commercial vehicle, as a taxi car, instead of being looked at as an aspirational model for consumers who want to upgrade. Uh, it started off obviously uh, with the idea that, you know, why do you want to restrict a platform to just one body, body shape so you can do a sedan out of it. Uh, and then came this regulation of the government which actually uh, incentivized manufacturing sub 4 meter cars. And that was the birth of the sub 4 meter sedans. That was another large market just waiting to happen. Yeah. Okay, with the rise of BPOs and, and these large corporates who would not want to possibly be riding or driving their own vehicles. Okay, and the growth of tourism and the growth of aviation and so on and so forth. This was the perfect vehicle to give. So it has the reliability of a Maruti. Okay, it has a diesel engine in it, which initially the, when the Swift was launched, it didn't have a diesel. Okay, and it is a sedan. And probably to, just to add to that, um, I think taxis per se are not detrimental uh, because in, in, in Germany, and most of the taxis are Mercedes. That doesn't stop you from buying a Mercedes. And for sure, um, in India, we have a different perception of taxis. But once a customer or prospective customer uses a taxi, 
that's also one way of direct marketing. You, you see how the car is. Maybe in your buying decision later on, it probably has a positive influence. Absolutely. Right, makes sense. And one last uh, very interesting question I have for you all is that if you had to market the Maruti Swift now, how would you do it? I'll start with you. Yeah, if we were in Maruti now, we would again reconfigure and re reconfigure the game. Because, uh, you see, you started off as a rebel, you've now become the convention. We would make it the rebel again. What about you and how would you probably make it a rebel again? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, I mean, I would think that we would do it probably only digital, for example. That you can configure your car and you press buy and including uh, your, your loan and your insurance and everything gets delivered to you, just like in Flipkart or Amazon. Configuring your vehicle, for exactly. example, okay. Mm -hmm. Making the Swift the one vehicle in the Indian landscape which you can actually configure the way you configure a Dell computer. I can choose my engine, I can choose the way the ECM is tuned, I can choose my tires, I can choose my paint job, I can choose the way the interiors are done. Okay? Because I want to rebel from the convention. Plus today it's all about customization. And it's all about customization. Well, this sounds fabulous. Thank you so much for taking time out and sharing these amazing anecdotes with us. Thank you so much for being on Brandstand. Thanks, Thank a lot. You. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Pleasure.